Oh, well, somebody wants to unmute. Okay. Okay. I think uh, today, um, why don't we keep it in a, as an open forum? I, I want to send you guys my business plan. I'm doing my own business planning today with my team. But in terms of motivation, uh, I want you guys to like, keep it open today. What, what, what are your guys' thoughts on 2024? Any concerns, com comments, questions, insights? You know, I'm here to, to help you guys. <laughs> okay. No questions? Oh, I can't hear anything. All right, anybody, anybody, questions? If not. What is the number one driver of uh, how you run your team and how you guys create business and get leads? Okay, Jackson, right? And Jackson, you are a team member on the team? Yep. Okay, perfect. So what is the number one driver is accountability, right? What accountability structures do you guys have on your team? Um, we have a uh, pod leader. So our team is structured into, we have four different pod leaders and then everyone is assigned um, or sorry, a sales manager or pod leader. Um, and everyone is assigned kind of like a pod leader. So um, we kind of have it structured. So that way, you know, if you have any specific questions or you want to like meet with your group or anything like that, um, you kind of have your pod there within your uh, group there to, to look to. Okay, perfect. And what happens if you guys don't hit your daily measures, like sending out texts, emails, calls? Joe, I feel like you can, you can jump way in on this here. Okay. So what we do is uh, we have a software where we have all the agents input their contact numbers on a daily basis and we as leadership myself axel michael and bonnie we have access to uh, the software where we can see okay who's actually inputting their numbers and if they don't hit their daily measures for a week then they don't get the leads so it's massive accountability um structures that we put in right so that for us um, is it. And of course, we have daily powwows, which are about half an hour per day. And that happens at 10 a.m. every single day. Uh, we make sure that the agents show up. And today we actually like ha have what you guys have is in-person meetings. And we call out everybody like one by one. How many contacts did you do? I didn't see your uh, input yesterday. Uh, did you actually prospect? So those call outs, you know, really get people to take action. And once you take action, it's going to lead to production, right? But the thing is, um, my thought in 2024 is that you need to track your numbers. Do you guys have any sort of numbers tracking software or do you guys track numbers on the team? Yeah, we have each person set up with a like Google Sheets as well as follow up bots that tracks like how many people they're reaching out to, how many of those are converting to appointments, how many of those are being met, how many of those are going to contract and how many of those are uh, are ending up on market and closed. Uh, and so that's what we've provided every agent on the team with for 2024. Uh, I would love to if you could share a little bit about what some of what are some of the goals that you give your team uh, individual agents on your team to go after some of the goals to go after i think you know what we have for them is gci goal obviously and a number of families helped goal those are very simple measures that you want right and then we crunch it backwards okay well if my number in terms of taking a listing in terms of deals close is 100 to 1 then we hold them accountable on okay well if you want 20 transactions in 2024 and one every 100 contacts you do one deal which is 20 times sorry yeah okay so that's 20 transactions times 100 contacts which is 2000 right and by way of working 200 days out of that year how many contacts is that per day <laughs> i 
I'm gonna do the math. 2,000 divided by 20. Sorry, divided 54? by- 54. So 54 per day, 54 contacts per day. And we've got to hold them accountable to that. And if based on their current ratios, guys, if they can't do 54 contacts a day, then we're going to say, okay, well, either your ratios have to get a lot better or uh, we're going to have to adjust your goal based on your current ratios right now, because it's simply not realistic for you to do, you know, 54 contacts a day, unless of course you could say, okay, well, I'm going to do it. And you're going to be held accountable to that on a daily basis. So that's kind of how we crunch it backwards. And each and every agent we're going to go through today, basically, okay, well, uh, what's your GCI goal? What's your family's health goal? And then based on your current ratios right now, um, how many people do you need to talk to per day? And we're going to hold you accountable to that. Now, further to that, guys, um, I can teach them like so many lead sources, so many ways of prospecting to get a transaction. However, if you don't know exactly why you want to do it, you're not going to want to do it, right? So I always talk about the why. So I have them fill out on a full page, 20 reasons why you want to be successful in 2024, 20 reasons why you want your goals. And the first 10 to 15 are going to be, okay, well, I want to buy a new house. I want to buy a new investment. I want to buy some new clothes and this and that, all the materialistic stuff, all the surface stuff. But at the end of it, at the very bottom of the five at the bottom are going to be very deep. Uh, I want to make my kids happy. I want to make my parents happy. I want, I need to take care of my parents financially. I need to take care of my brother financially, whatever it is, guys. If you don't know the why you are doing what you are doing, then you're not going to want to do it because more often than not, do we get up and we say, well, fuck, I don't want to get up today. Yes or no. Right. So that's why I always look at my 20 reasons why, oh shit, you know, if I don't hit my goals this year, I'm going to have to be grinding for a long, long time. And my parents are not going to see me. My kids are going to hate me. You know, we're not going to have money for the kids, private school, whatever it is. Right. And for myself, you know, God damn it. I got two older brothers, 12, 13 years old than me still eating off of my 78 year old mom. I get up and I say, you know, fuck it. I'm the one. I'm the one. Right. If not me, then who? If not now, then when? So I got to get up and bust my ass. And if you don't have that kind of conviction every day when you get up, you know, you're not going to want to do it, right? You know, it's probably not as cold um, here in Vancouver as Minnesota or Minneapolis right now, but it's cold. Sometimes it's cold. And I don't want to get up. It's warm in my bed. But when I think about my brothers, I'm like, you know what? I got to, I got to get up. I got to make myself successful, Right. I got to be the one to change my family tree. And there is no options. There is no option. I, I, I have no other options. I have a degree in psychology that allows me to earn $30,000 per year. Right? You know, nothing wrong with that. But I was, I'm never going to be able to help my brothers. I'm never going to be able to help my mom with the, for the rest of her life. Right? So I think, yeah, burn the boats. You got to burn the boats. I have no other options. I never had any other options when I was $80,000 in debt in 2008. You know, I, I, I had no other options. I had to worry about my next meal every single day. I remember, you know, sitting on a sales center and I was there seven days a week from 12 to five. And I prospected from eight to 11 beforehand. And then after five, I would prospect for my own business thereafter. And every single day I ha had one meal and we, we would split a, a chicken, a whole chicken, that was seven dollars and ninety nine cents back then, two thousand and eight, with my buddy that we worked together, and uh, we went through it, right? But you know what? I never quit. So the good news is, guys, a lot of agents have quit. Seventy thousand agents have quit in the U.S. this year. Okay, and I just never quit. And if you guys uh, want to come out on top, you just got to never quit, right? And you guys are, you know, people are showing up on Zoom here. People who are showing up in person, that's exactly what it takes because 80% of the struggle, 80% of success is simply showing up. And the 20% in real estate is who you talk to and what you say, right? So I hope you guys understand like, you know, where I come from is like, I had no options. But if you have too many options, right? Today, it's like, okay, well, 
uh, we can do this and we can do that. We can make money here, make money there. But I, I'm just really pigeonholed in, okay, I need to talk to people and that leads to appointments and appointments lead to uh, contracts and contracts lead to transactions, right? So that's all I'm thinking about every single day. I was fanatical and I was obsessed about taking listings. And here's what I believe. Listings are the name of the game as they say it, but listings guys in 2024 is how you stay in the game. So I've heard, I don't know if this is true in the States, you guys are dropping the rates six times. Is that correct? Yes or no? Yeah. So potentially. What you, potentially. Okay. Potentially. Maybe not. Maybe not. Or maybe. Right. Well, but what do you think is going to happen to the inventory? It'll get chewed up real quick. It'll get chewed up real quick. And you guys have 30 year uh, mortgages, right? And people are locked in at 2%. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. So what do you think next year when the rates drop, uh, how many more buyers are going to come into the market? A lot. A lot. So multiple offers are going to come back in a big way. They call it the reverse crash because nobody's going to be able to buy next year. And the listing agents will win. So I got, want you guys to write down, I'm fanatical about taking listings. I'm a great listing agent. That's all I'm thinking about for 2024. I don't care. I don't, we don't, we don't, on our team guys, we don't have listing agents or buyer's agents. We have agents that take a lot of listings. Every agent wants to be a great listing agent. We want to be a listing based team. Okay. So that's all I'm thinking about. So whatever you can do in 2024, think about taking listings. That's all you got to do because buyers are going to have a tough time. Yes or no? Yep. Yep. All right. Yeah. All right. So that's my thought on that. But I really, guys, I want you to think about why you are doing this. And, uh, you know, you can't give yourself any options. Um, any questions about 2024? Any questions about how to uh, stay strong through the holidays? Or any objections that you're running into right now that you cannot overcome? Feel free. I don't know if it's um, so much questions, John, but I'm curious about how do you how do you inspire or motivate i believe motivation needs to come from within that's how i personally feel about yeah. it but how do you inspire agents to continue to uh, you know set big goals for themselves going into the next year when 2023 might have been one of the hardest years that they've had yeah this is great and i always always tell my team you know what you've got you guys have been through the worst the good news is you guys have been through the worst right now, in 2024, it's your opportunity because if we don't ever quit, other people will. And in 2008, that's exactly what I did. And the good news is just keep, just stay with me here. Just stay with me. Guys, in 2024, if you just do the bare minimum, you're going to come out on top. So I don't always ask them, well, what are you striving for? What are you working towards? Right? Because if they're not motivated or inspired right now, I can ask them questions to have them self-discover what they are working towards, what's important to them. But they have to have the desire first. Mm -hmm. So I know you guys have the desire already when you're coming on this call, when you're in person there. So you guys already have the desire. I just need to ask you questions to have you self-realize again why you're doing what you're doing today. And the good news is you've been through the worst. Right. And the bad news is you have to put in the work. You might need to do double the amount of work in 2024. You think it's hard right now. It might be even harder in 2024 because there are no listings available for your buyers. So you got to commit to being a great listing agent in 2024. And everybody wants listings. Right. So I would always ask them, OK, what's important to you? Ultimately, if you got that, how would that make you feel? And ultimately, what would that do for you and your family, right? But the, here's the thing. Sorry, who, who was speaking there? Selena. Selena. I can't motivate the unmotivated. Right. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Just like any buyers and sellers, I can't motivate you if you are unmotivated to buy or sell. 
I am simply there to support you with your goals until you are ready. Right. And guys on the team, like you're already here on the Zoom call. You're already there in person. You're already motivated. You're already inspired. You want something. Right. So listen to me. Just dig in on your why. Why am I doing this? Why is this important to me? Right. And you got to ask your question. As team leaders, as leaders in general, we need to show up every single day and lead by example. Now, every single day, I don't need to, sometimes guys, you know, this is a great Zoom call. You have 16 people on Zoom and then another maybe 10 or 12 people in person. You guys are already rock stars showing up. You know, we have 56 people on our team. And sometimes those Zoom calls that I do, there might be five or six people. But guess what? I show up, right? We have five Zoom calls every single day for our team. I show up. I got to lead by example. But if I don't show up, they're not going to show up. So if you're a leader on your team right now, which all you all you all are, right? Just show up, show up, pay attention, work hard, and don't be attached to the outcome of what team members do or not. The team members are that are un, uninspired, that you know are unmotivated, un, you know they they don't do anything. They're gonna wither away. And I can't do anything about it. But what I can do is what I do is control the controllables. Because guys, can we control the interest rates? Yes or no? No. No. Can we control the market? Yes or no? No. Can we control the lawsuits? Yes or no? No. no. But what I can control every single day is how many people I talk to and working on my scripts and keeping in touch with my past client center of influence and wishing them happy holidays. I got to control myself first. I got to, if you want to be a great leader today, you got to lead yourself first. Right? Mm -hmm. So- are you in integrity with your actions every single day? Are you doing what you said you would do every single day as a leader? You see, you got to lead by example or else the people that are watching you, see, they don't do what you say. They do what you do. Right? So, Selena, does that make sense? It does. Tell them it's Jelena. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I hope. Jelena? Sorry. I'm the one who texts you all the time on Instagram. That's all. Oh, hey. How's it going? this morning <laughs> this morning all right all right good so I, I i hope that makes sense guys you gotta lead yourself and you gotta be on fire every day with your actions and those days that you simply don't want to get up those days that you're hurting all over those are the days that are the best days of your life because once you work through that you're going to come out on top that's the Thank difference between a non-producer and a producer is they do their job, even though they don't feel like it, right? And I'm sure it's sometimes it's tough to get out of bed, right? For me, I'm, I'm still, I've been sick for two weeks, but I show up and today I'm going to go out there and, and inspire my team, right? But I'm, I'm about 80%, but that's okay. I'm going to show up, right? Awesome. So any other questions? I want you to expound on that a little bit. Self-discipline sure. when motivation is waning. Yeah, motivation is not is not uh it doesn't last every single day it doesn't last but you need to motivate yourself every single day and if you so here's the thing write down motion creates emotion because i might not feel like it every single day but once you get moving you'll feel like moving so today at 4 30 in the morning i woke up and i was like fuck i don't want to get up but you know what my left leg just went down from the bed to the floor. And then my right leg went down. Right. And then I was like, okay, I'm up. Oh, fuck. My head hurts. Oh my gosh. But then, you know what? Guess what? And once I get downstairs, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I, you know, I'm moving now. And then once you move, you feel like moving and then you just create momentum, momentum, mm -hmm. momentum. It's all about momentum. And once I'm, you know, after, so 4.30, I wake up, I drink my celery juice, I meditate for about 15 minutes, I go to the gym and take my pre-workout and I work out for an hour and a half. And by an, an hour and a half during those, those hour and a half, at the end of it, I do affirmations, I journal, I read 10 pages of a book. And by seven o'clock in the morning, my mindset is already taken care of. That's my me time. Okay, so that's my discipline in my mindset. 
And guys, mindset is everything for a real estate salesperson. Is eighty percent psychology and twenty percent mechanics, which is what talking what we talked about. Pareto's law uh, of you know eighty twenty is same thing, and you know eighty percent psychology and twenty percent mechanics, right? So you, you got to just keep moving, and you feel like moving. So that's why I can never stop. I can never stop. Right. I know if I stop, you know, what happened? I went to Hawaii for a week, right? After a, a long year, I fly five, six times a, a month uh, to promote EXP. And I come back, I have to lead my team. And then, you know, I got a prospect, got a, I got a recruit. But guess what? When I guess what happened when I went to Hawaii? I got sick. I don't know. I got sick because your immune system are like, okay, it's time to relax. It's time to relax. And that's when trouble's coming to look for you. You got to keep your head in the game. I'm not saying don't take time off, but my immune system was, was saying to me, oh, okay, I, I can take some time off now. Therefore, I got sick, right? So keep moving, keep moving. And you, what, when you think you've got things handled, trouble's coming to look for you. Is that fair? Yeah. 2020, 2021, guess what? You know, our team was able to uh, generate $3.8 million GCI. And my revenue share uh, in 2021 was uh, $660,000. I was like, shit, I got to handle it. I'm, I'm just going to go spend my money, right? Investment properties. I bought a Lambo. I bought a G-Wagon, bought a Defender. Fuck, you know, all these businesses. I'm just throwing money around. But guys, when you think you've got it handled, trouble's coming to look for you. What happened July 2022? For me and my market, the sales went down by 60% overnight. Okay. And it, it, it sustained that for about a whole year, guys. And guess what happened to my money? It ran out. It ran out. It went to zero. And then guess what happens at the end of the year as a realtor, guys? Taxes. <laughs> Taxes. So I got a $380,000 bill that came to me. I was like, oh, shit. How can I be so stupid after 18 years in real estate? I don't ever learn my lesson. Ego is not your amigo. And if you think you got to handle troubles coming to look for you, but you know what? I learned a big lesson right? that I can never rest on my laurels. I can never become complacent. I always have to keep the intentionality and deliberateness right in my head. Like this is my goal. And I'm not, even when I reach my goal, I got to set another goal because Guys, you're always going to hit your measures, even when you don't. Like you, when you when you declare a goal, you're always going to reach that goal at some point. We're we're just not as entrepreneurs, as salespeople, we're just not realistic with our time frame. Okay, there's no unrealistic goal. There's just unrealistic time frames, right? So coming back to motivation and discipline is that you can't be complacent. So just think about that. And, and if you think you got it handled, trouble's coming to look for you. And you got to take your ego out of the way. If you write down the word E-G-O, right? That's your ego. And slash out the E. Slash out the E. What do we have? Go. 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 So every single day, I'm like, you know what? I got to go. I got to <laughs> do this. Right? Let's go. I can't st rest on my laurels. Right? It's not even about discipline anymore. I'm just like, I got to show up because I got something at stake. I, I paid off the $380,000, but I know something else is coming for me. Someone else is coming for me. And I got to do this for my daughters. I got to do this for my parents. I got to do this for my wife. So if you're not motivated every single day, you got to look for that why. And that why will actually get you to be disciplined, which is why I'm disciplined every single day. Because... I, what's the cost of moving forward every single day? Uh, you know, I'm not going to feel too good. You know, I got a headache, you know, uh, I got no, no money in the bank. What's the cost of moving forward versus guys, what's the cost of moving backwards? If I don't do my job today, what's the cost in the next six months? What's the cost in the next 90 days? If I don't prospect today, what's the cost of going backwards? Does that make sense? I don't yeah. want to go backwards. The, the worst thing you can do is be exactly at the place you're at this year, next year, exactly the same time. So all, I uh, all I'm focused on, guys, is 1% better every single day. That's all you got to be. And don't compare yourself with anybody else because you're comparing yourself 
your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 30. All you got to do is constant and never ending improvement. Can I? If I'm 1% better every single day, I don't have to worry about anything else. I do my best every single day and I forget the rest. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so every single day, that's, that's the way I look at motivation and discipline. And uh, motivation doesn't last just like, you know, uh, personal hygiene. I, that's why I take a shower every day, <laughs> right? So I hope that makes sense. That was great. Thanks. Can I ask you another question about um, your why? When you're doing your time in the morning, you talk about getting like the crappy stuff out of the way first. Is part of that getting in the mindset of, do you remind yourself what your why is every day or how do you choose to keep that in focus? Is it a daily commitment that you're reflecting on what your why is and, and the reasons that you are in this business? Or is that something that you have written down and keep up on a wall somewhere as motivation? How is it that you stay in tune with that? Yeah, so I keep my goals right in front of me, right? Um, you know, here's my ref share dashboard goal. Um, I just look at these goals, you know, 400 uh, transactions um, and then, um, you know, BNI goal of 30 members and I keep some pictures and I have a vision board and I looked at, look at that every single day. And what you guys probably want to do, have you guys ever heard of a prophecy letter, what that is? No, no. I don't think so. Oh, okay, great. So your life? Sorry? Manifesting your future life? Manifesting your future life, exactly. So I write down my family goals, my financial goals, my career goals, my spiritual goals, right? And I write it in the past tense. So I just wrote it about two days ago and I date it, you know, 2024, December 31st. I'm so happy and grateful now that, and then boom, 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 all these areas of my life. And guess what? I've been doing it every single year, guys. I just read back my 2022 when I when I wrote uh, about 2023. Eighty percent of what I wrote down manifested. Eighty percent of what I wrote down. Now the twenty percent that didn't happen wasn't that important to me anyways, and I completely let go of it. So try this, and and what I do is write it, but put it away. Put it away. I never looked at it again until a year later and the stuff that were important to me, right? Manifested. So you guys should do that. And then you guys should do a little vision board of what can inspire you every single day. So it's a daily, it's a daily battle. It's a daily struggle, isn't it guys? Are we not struggling every single day? Well, I know I am. I know every day is tough. I know every day I'm dealing with something, right? But the, the, the bumps on the road, right? Or what's going to get me stronger. So all the problems that I've ever had, I look at them as opportunities, right? In 2008, I was $80,000 in debt, you know, and my mom had an aneurysm and she almost died and she's still here today. That's, it's awesome. But like any, any, anything that you can solve with money are really not problems, but I take them as growth opportunities, right? My dad in 2013, he passed away and he left me with, you know, said, Sai family is yours. Like, how was I supposed to know as a 33-year-old and the youngest in the family that I was going to carry the burden of, uh, you know, carrying on the legacy? And 10 years after, I realized, holy shit, he was right. Because my brothers weren't, <laughs> weren't making money back then. I was like, okay, that's fine. But today, they're still not making money. 56, 57 years old, still living off of my mom. Right? Maybe I shouldn't be putting my brothers down, but it is what it is. <laughs> It just, they just don't have money and it, it's as real as it gets and I got to support them. And you know what? They have kids. One has five kids and one has two. And who else is going to gonna step up for the family? It's the, it's the young, it's the uncle. I'm the baby of the family. But you know what? Instead of saying, why me? Say, try me. Every single day that motivates me like, oh, you know what? I'll show you. When people tell me I can't do it, I'm going to be like, I mean, yeah, dude, I'll show you. And every single day, I'm answering to that. I'll show you. So who do you have to show today? Some negative reinforcement with a positive connotation, right? But sometimes you need to encourage yourself as well. So if you guys have done your job every single day, you just need to pat your back, uh, uh, pat yourself on the back and say, I've done my job today. I said I was going to do 30 contacts, 30 real estate conversations every single day. And I did it today. 
And I can't hate myself for that. And if nothing happened today, I'm good because I said I did what I said I was going to do. Integrity. Right? And I got to feel good about that because I controlled my controllables. I can't control if I walk on the street and somebody hits me with a car. I can't. But I'm not worried about it. Right? You got to have faith and hope of something good is going to happen. But if you don't take action towards that, right, you're never going to make it happen. Right. So let's say if I wanted to go to Minneapolis, right, I'm, I'm going to have faith that the, the plane will land. That's called faith, blind faith that the plane will land. But I still got to book the, the, the ticket and still got to get on the plane. That's called taking action. Does that make sense, guys? So every single day, I, I you know, I look at my goal uh, of what we're about to achieve next year. You know, I hope and pray and meditate on it. But if I don't wake up from my hoping and praying and get to action every single day, I'm not going to achieve my goals. Right. Action creates results. It's as simple as that. If you can, can keep it as simple as talking to people, going on appointments, taking listings, securing buyers and making sales in 2024. Like because complexity is the enemy of execution. Keep it really, really simple for yourself. And every single day, I just keep it simple. I don't, I don't try to complicate the things, right, that, that are in my life. And for things that you don't want to do in your life, delegate it. You got a big team here and, and things that you, you're not good at, ask for help. And do the things that you're good at. So I only focus on what I'm good at every single day. And as a real estate salesperson, I knew back in the day when I was still in full-time production, I was good at prospecting. I was good at connecting with people. So do that every single day. And you got to be in your fire every single day, right? Identify what your fire is in lead generation and do that and expand on that. I knew that back in the day that I was good at talking to expired listings and I was good at talking to my past client center of influence. So I just did that, right? And I identified that when I talked to a hundred people, I would take one listing but then once I identified that most of those contacts are a waste of time and I just focus on expired listings and my past clients, I went from 100 contacts per listing taken to 17 contacts per listing taken. Then the business became really fun. I could take 100 listings without working seven days a week, 12 to 14 hour days. Right. So I don't know if that answered the question or not. That was great. Can I ask you one more question? Of course. A quick summary of how you structure your day or how you encourage your agents to structure their day for the most amount of success. What does that schedule look like? Ah, perfect. So I'm all about schedules. Like I said, you know, you got to do two things every single day. As a real estate salesperson, remember to keep it really simple. Mornings are for getting business, prospecting, lead generation, lead follow-up. And afternoons are for doing business, going on appointments, CMAs, previewing properties, taking buyers, taking listings, right? And if you could just do that from seven, right? To noon, I'm prospecting, lead follow-up. And in the afternoon, from noon to five o'clock or six o'clock, I am negotiating contracts, doing CMAs and going on appointments, okay? But out of all that, like before seven o'clock, that's why I wake up so early at 4.30 is that I need to get my mindset straight, so every single day I wake up at 4.30, I got to go to the gym, right? So write down savers, S-A-V-E-R-S. S is for silence. I meditate twice a day because don't you all guys have crazy thoughts in your head that come into your mind? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yeah. Yep. I have them every day. I don't know. Maybe I'm nuts. <laughs> Number two is affirmations. I need to know that I'm talking to myself positively every single day because all those crazy thoughts that come into my head, they're all negative. Like 99% of all the thoughts that come into my head just out of the ether automatically are negative. So I need to affirm to myself, today is a great day. Today I have energy. Today is the day I'm going to make it happen. I'm alive, excited, and full of energy. I'm a great listing agent. I prospect with intensity. Boom. And then I'm like, okay, I'm feeling good. I got some momentum. I got some energy in my body, right? And next I go visualize my positive outcome every single day. What's my day look like? What's my week look like? What's my month look like? What's my year look like? And I come out of that visualization for about five minutes and I go and exercise. Exercise for, for about an hour and a half. I'm, I'm a little bit older. I'm 44 years old. So I, I do a lot of uh, mobility stuff and then I go into lifting, right? And then I come back 
And then I do, what's the next one? ER. So I read 10 pages of a book. And right now I'm reading The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. That was uh, referred to me by, uh, recommended to me by Glenn Sanford, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. And last but not least, I journal. I haven't done it today yet, but uh, just journaling every single day. Writing down my craziest thoughts out on paper, right? Reading is for putting positive stuff into your head and journaling is about getting all the negative stuff out of your head. So if I did that, did all that, thank you for writing that down, right? Scribe. Um, if I did all that before seven o'clock, then I know my mindset's taken care of. And then boom, I can go. So seven, seven o'clock to 7.30, I do one role play with an agent. And 7.30 to eight o'clock, I do another role play with another agent. Eight o'clock, I get on the phones or I go out door knocking, right? I'm calling, texting, emailing all of my clients. I make 50 contacts from eight o'clock to 12 o'clock, go for a quick lunch. And then in the afternoon, I'm coming back, pre-qualifying, negotiating contracts, right? And I'm going on appointments and taking listings. And if I could just do that until four or five o'clock, I can go home and have dinner with my family. My mentor and uh, my former boss, Bob Rennie, he's got a multimillionaire. He used to do 365 deals uh, a year um, as a solo agent with one assistant. He said, um, never eat lunch alone. Always eat lunch with a client or a friend that could give you business, right? But then always come home for dinner because family, guys, is first. Health is first. If you don't have your family and you don't have your health, none of what you do here in real estate will matter. Then you're just lonely. You're going to die alone, right? And you're, die, you're going to die unhealthy. You're going to die young. Nobody wants that. So I take care of my temple first every single day, right? I got my body fat down from 15% all the way to 8%, right? And because I'm, 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 you know, I'm getting older now. So I, I make sure I, I, you know, I take four sets of supplements every single day. I take care of my health, take, take care of my temple. Once you have a healthy body, you have a healthy mind, you have a healthy mindset, then you can work on your skill set, then you can work on your schedule, then you can go out and prospect, then you're on fire every single day. Does that help with the schedule? Yeah, that was great. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm just, uh, basically, this is what I do. I'm not, I'm not sharing nothing that I, I don't do myself. Mm -hmm. So I hope that, hope that helps. Does anybody in the audience, um, we're going to, we're, we're being mindful of his time. And then obviously we have business planning coming up next. Does anyone in the audience have any question uh, for John? Yes. Uh, thoughts on Saturday morning prospecting. Thoughts on Saturday morning prospecting. Yeah, I think that's the best time to prospect on, on Saturday morning. I used to go from 10 to 12, go door knocking. And a lot of people that I could not reach during the week, 10 to 12 on Saturday would be best. And for sale by owners, um, a lot of times I visit them uh, four to six o'clock on a Sunday, right? And that's provided that you guys, you know, are in the few first few years of your business, you're still in the grind mode. I would definitely do that. And guys, before you go home every single day, let's say you're parked in the garage, right? You you had a long day, you're freaking tired. Make three more calls. Just make three more calls. And we, we, that's what we call three hot somebodies. The hot leads that you could not reach during the day, they'll likely pick up before you go home because they just went home as well from work, right? The three hot somebodies, you can set a lot of appointments that way. So when I get home Monday to Friday, three hot somebodies. And on Saturday, if you want to do some extra prospecting or door knocking before your open houses, 10 to 12, get the word out about the open house, ask for referrals, right? And four to six on Sunday, we're going out previewing property again for sale by owners or expired listings when you couldn't reach them during the week. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Perfect. Any, any, any last questions? I have one. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. For someone who is uh, much heavier on the buy side than the listing side, what would be your best advice to really take steps to shift that? Shift into a great listing agent? Yeah, to kind of reverse. Like right now, it's like 30% list side, 70% buy side. Obviously, you're saying the goal would be to inverse that or even more. Just curious advice on that. 
ideally you want to be a 70% listing based agent and 30% buyer based because you can control your time a lot more. So I, what, what's always said is your buyer deals and your buyer career will fund your listing career. I, you know, me as a solo agent that I knew that all the, all the buyer deals that I had to save up to put towards marketing or any coaching or anything like that towards lit my listing pro property career. So, you know, with regards to buyers, I know that I, if I wanted to transition more into the listing side that I, I only work with buyers that are, have motivation level of seven, eight, nine, and 10. And you have to gauge all your buyers right now, write them all down, engage them by their motivation level. If there are six, I might need to just say, you know what, maybe call them once a month and not like be on them all the time. And every time I show property, I'm showing no more than three to five properties at a time. I'm not going to show them 10 properties because that's a waste of my time. I want to be able to stay on the phone from eight to 12. I'm not taking buyers in eight to 12. I'm taking buyers in the afternoon. So if you can you know, gear all your prospecting in the morning towards taking listings and the buyers would just come because one listing equals multiple buyers. One listing should equal to you and your business 1.5 buyers. Okay. So that's all I'm thinking about. So do the buyers that are highly motivated and then with the rest of the time prospect for listings. That's what I did. That's what I did. And if you have a big team like this, a lot of times I can just say, hey, you know what? All the buyers I'm delegating or collaborating with another agent on the team, or I'm just going to give it to you. And then I'm going to go take more listings because I want control of my time. You know, not everybody wants to take listings. I'm not trying to sell the idea, but I, listings are just more leverage based because one listing equals multiple buyers and one buyer equals one buyer. Right. They can turn into multiple deals in years, but usually one listing can, can equal to multiple deals. Does that make sense, Tim? Yes, thank you. And then just curious, like favorite prospecting strategies for leaning more into listings versus buyers. So what I did again, um, if you guys can call expired listings, I would definitely call expired listings for sale by owners. Right. Uh, if the inventory is low, Right. Then I would even put some ad dollars into, you know, like a landing page or something like that to capture people who are curious about their property values. Uh, those online leads are usually six to nine months. Uh, those uh, those seller leads. Um, but that that's what I did. Expire listings for, for sale by owners is what built my listing career. Right. And then it transitioned into massively uh, my past client center of influence. So. You know, I used to do uh, multiple and now we're doing more and more client parties. Client parties are just massive for referrals and we're doing one every other month right now. So that's been huge for us. But was that a, when I was a solo agent, I just simply, Tim, talked to 50 people per day, five days a week and five years in a row. And I took 100 listings plus every single year as a result of me grinding. Right. And after those five years, I mean, I built my database up to over 2000. So, you know, no matter how you look at it, we're going to do a couple hundred deals just from my database. And that's where you want to get to. How many years have you been in real estate now, Tim? Uh, coming up on two, a year two and a half. years. OK, OK. Do this hard. Go hard for five years and you're, you're not going to have to worry about your career after five years if you just go hard. Because, guys, it's like. It's like you, you, your plane's getting off, right? Your plane's getting off. You need full throttle right now. Just full throttle. A massive, never-ending action for three to five years, guys. You're going to have to go seven days a week, 12, 14 hour days, but it's going to be worth it because mm -hmm. after five years, they're all just going to be coming back to you. Then, then you're going to have come list me calls. Should you call your past client center of influence once a quarter, mail them once a quarter, right? And email them once a month. Take care of them, respect them, call them all the time, right? You're not going to have to worry about business five years from now. Make sense? Yeah. Helpful. We're, Thanks. We're in a unique position on our team just with the structure that we have with leads and our lead partnerships. Um, and that's something for you guys to think about too. So when it comes to our team leads program, um, think about it this way. When you're planting a garden, you can start from a seed and it takes much longer to grow or you can start from a plant that's been kind of pre-started for you. And that's the value of the team lead. So when he's talking about going hard for three to five years, 
our business setup here on the team allows you to shorten that time significantly in terms of building referral-based business, just by the fact we're already giving you plantings, so to speak, for your garden. They're not something that you have to culti cultivate from the ground up. These are ready buyers that are willing to go. And um, so the nice thing about this is you can focus on listings, but you can also focus on uh, taking advantage of all the resources that the team has to provide to grow a business even faster than that. That's what the team is for, to help you guys move faster, right. to take the headache out of your hair, right? Okay. So you guys have such a great team. I'm so excited for you guys for 2024, man. And just, uh, I'm really inspired that um, how many people showed up today and um, just, uh, you know, yeah, really you appreciate know, the opportunity. About 20 people here. So, so in addition to what we have online, we've got about 20 people here in the office. Holy so. cow. Hey, you guys inspire me, man. Hey, I, I need you guys on my team, please. <laughs> well john flying to minnesota i'll buy you steak dinner okay will do hey i i uh i forgot my uh lacrosse ball in the hotel so i'm gonna go back and get it sounds good, sounds good. <laughs> well john i just want to thank you for coming on and i think everyone here uh in person and online took away something that's going to be able to help them be more successful in 2024 so i just want to thank you for your time today uh and yes. i want to thank you for everyone showing up and with that, we're going to close it off. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you soon, guys. Happy holidays. Bye-bye. Happy holidays. Bye -bye. Happy holidays.